verse out of Romans uh, 5, 5. And I want to say while you're turning, uh, this is the time of year when we uh, kind of look upon the subject of love. We all know the different aspects of love, agape love, of course the love of God, eros love, their love between couples, philios love between the brethren and so forth. And as I was uh, studying and prepared for this this week, I, I noticed that I probably had about a half a dozen sermons on the love of God. But this is the first time that I had ever considered this verse in Romans about the love of God. And I'll read it. Uh, Romans 5, 5. And hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given uh, to us. May God add the blessing to the blessing of the reading. The love of God is shed abroad to the Corinthians, and they were a very carnal lot, 
culture. In fact, Paul uh, referred to them as babes, as we saw a few weeks ago, babes in Christ. Yet the Holy Spirit dwelt uh, in them. And when we come to Christ, we get everything that God offers us. And I uh, read some of those things there, the first few verses of Romans 5, that God offers in salvation. I want us to look this morning a little deeper. Uh, the love of God in terms of being shed abroad, in terms of being manifested by the Holy Spirit. First of all, the character of this love. This is God's love. It is the nature of love. And God being love in His very essence, it is the nature of uh, love to seek out the helpless and the needy. And to pour into the lap of poverty all the wealth of its possession. Why do we help the poor? Why do we help the needy? Why does God have such a concern for the poor and the helpless and the needy? It's because He is love. And love cannot help but be spread. I mean, if you've got the love of God, folks, within you this morning, you can't help the Spirit. It's going to bubble over and it's going to be spread abroad. Love cannot remain in that. Now, secondly, it manifests itself. Now, Romans 5 8, notice if you will. But God commendeth His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. This is the largest way, the most central way that the love of God is shown to sinners on our way to hell. We're the object, who are the objects of His love? Well, He loved us. We are the objects of His love. Formerly we were lost sinners on our way to hell. And God so loved the world, as it says in John 3.16, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him will not perish, but have eternal life. As I've said many times, love couldn't do it. Love was the motivation, but love couldn't erase our sins. Love itself could not uh, remedy uh, the fact that we had sinned against the holiness of God. Love couldn't take care of that, folks. Love couldn't sweep that under the rug because while God's essence is love, God is a, uh, is a holy God that cannot uh, have any part of sin. Now, when, when did, was this love manifest? While we were yet sinners, when dead in sin, this is how the love of God was manifested towards us. When we were dead in sin, and being dead in sin, it's just if, uh, for example, I had a, a dead body up here in the casket and I'm saying a few words over that person. Well, unless the supernatural act of God happens, that body ain't going to get up out of that casket. 
And let me tell you, if they did, I'd be running for that door. <laughs> I'd be scared. <laughs> We'd all be scared, wouldn't we? My point, that's how dead we were in our sins. And it took the, the supernatural uh, infusion of the Holy Spirit to bring us up from our sins that we were dead in sin. Now, how does love manifest itself? Well, with a love that is all divine, all embracing, and stronger than death. He loved us. God loved us more than the fallen angels. He loved us more than we loved ourselves, more than the angels of heaven, more than he loved himself. Behold, what love. Love will not hide. It overcomes every barrier and shows itself here in his love. Not that we love God, but we first love us. First John 14. The master storyteller Bennett Surf told about a little eight-year-old girl who had been passed from one orphanage to the other. She was very shy and felt rather unattractive. The other children would not play with her and the teachers considered her a proper child. Well, in this particular orphanage, there was a rule that all outside communication had to be censored by the staff. So one day, the director of the orphanage happened to see the little girl carrying a letter toward the wall that surrounded the institution. She climbed a tree near the wall, hung the envelope on the branch that could be reached from the street. Well, the director rushed out outside the gates, took down the letter and opened it. <coughs> and after she read its brief message, without a word, she passed it to her assistant. It said simply, from Susan to whomever finds this letter, I love you. Well, you know, a long time ago, some 2,000 years ago, near another wall, and stood a tree. A man hung upon it, and he died. And his word to all the world was simply from Jesus to all who pass this way. I love you. And as simple as you can get it. I love you. That's what Jesus in essence said. Hanging there upon Calvary's cross. During the 17th century, Oliver Crawford, by the way, if you're a history buff of English history, John this was the only time that England, Britain, whatever, was a republic. They didn't have a king, but Charles was in exile. Anyway, Crawford uh, was called Lord Protector of England, and he sent us a soldier to be shot for his crimes. But the execution was to take place at the reigning of the evening. However, the bell did not sound. The soldier's fiance had climbed into the belfry and clung to the great clapper of the bell to prevent it from striking. And when she was summoned by Cromwell to account for her actions, she wept as she showed uh, him her bruised and bleeding Cromwell's heart was touched and he said, Your lover shall live because of your sacrifice. Curfew shall not ring tonight. Just what Jesus did for us, by the way. Secondly, the love of God, the sphere of its operation. Now, it's not enough to see the evidences of God's love, in which we see many. But, his love is not satisfied with that. It has to be 
in our hearts, in the citadel of the soul, watering the roots of our affections and purifying the springs of the life. Shed abroad. The love of God is to fill and flood our men. As the light of the sun is shed abroad on the earth, scattering darkness and turning barrenness into fruitfulness. If the love of God possesses us, we shall take pleasure like Him in loving sinners and making sacrifice for their salvation. Love is the most practical thing on earth. In fact, it's the only thing that's going to survive when we leave this earth. Hope, hope, faith, and love. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13, which is the greatest love. You know, you know why it's going to, it is the greatest? Because it's the only thing that's going to survive. When we leave this earth, we're not going to need any more faith. We're not going to need any more hope because we're going to be in the presence of God and we're going to see Him face to face. Now today, we go by faith we can't see God. We can't see Jesus. We can't see the Holy Spirit. But we know they're real. But love is going to survive and remain when we get into the glory. One time a father wanted to teach his uh, son the lesson of God's goodness. And he took him to the top of a high hill and pointed northward over Scotland and southward over England, eastward over the ocean and westward over the hill and the valley. And sweeping his arm around the, the encircling horizon, he said, Jimmy, my boy, God's love is as big as all that. My father, the boy, replied with a sparkling eyes, then we must be right in the middle of it. And we are today. We are in the middle, in the midst of the love of God this morning. Uh, man, talk about something you can't describe. Love, you know, love anyway. You, uh, I don't care what type of love you're talking about. It's hard to talk about. It's hard to describe. And certainly the depth of the love of God, how He could love a sinner like me. There was a young woman who grew up in dire poverty in the heartland of the country. And a rich benefactor made it possible for her to take a trip to the coast where for the first time she saw the ocean. At rapture, she stood and gazed at its vastness. And in all, she was heard to say, thank God for something of which there is more than enough. So that is with God's love today. We stand in all of its vastness. And there's more than enough, more than enough to go around, more than the depths of the ocean, the love of God, where you're far, and the depths of the seas, the depths of the oceans, cannot be explained, understood. Now thirdly, we see the divine operator. Now this is the key here to the message. This great work is done by the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit's work to unveil the love of God to us in Christ Jesus and to create that love within us. He sheds it abroad in our hearts by taking the things of Christ and showing them unto us. Us. It is a teacher. It is a schoolmaster. It 
is uh, the, 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 really the only thing supernaturally that can spread the love of God in our hearts. Now naturally, in the fall of sinful man or woman dead in trespasses and sin, we don't, we don't have the love of God. And we really, I don't know that we can uh, love as we should. But the Holy Spirit, once it comes into our lives and it takes root, will work in such a way that the love of God will be shed abroad or manifested in our hearts. Now, uh, the Holy Ghost has, has given to us uh, the love of God. And if our hearts are to be filled with the love of God, the Spirit must have his abode within our hearts. Fruit of the Spirit is love. Because ye are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of his Son into your hearts. Galatians 4 6. One of the fruits of the Spirit. And if you don't have it this morning, then you're not going to uh, There's got to be some distinguishing characteristic of the Christian. And that has to be the love of God in our hearts. And it has to be the love of God being exhibited, being shown to our fellow man. And if it's, if it's not, then we better check them. Beloved, if God so loved us, then in the power and after the manner of that love, we all also to love one another. 1 John 4. That's why I've said many times, if you've got it, if you've got the love of God within you, if you've got the, the love of God manifested by the Holy Spirit in your heart, to show it <coughs> abroad. You're going to share it in some way. It will come out. Mark Luther in his commentary on the Romans says, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts, hope maketh not a shame. Because the love of God, that is the love which is of God and works in us and unshakable <coughs> adherence to Him is shed abroad in our hearts. This love we receive by grace and not on account of our merits. And it makes us willing to endure tribulation. That's the only way that we can get through tribulation this morning. That's how the early church got through it. They loved God. They loved Him with a... And today I just don't know, and I'm speaking for myself as well, and I'm talking about Christians all over the world. Do we love God as much as we should? I'd say we can afford to love Him a lot more. I think mean, He's done. He's done, <coughs> He's done the ultimate in His love by Jesus. Now, Saint Augustine, He says, step by step, He, the Apostle, leads us towards love, which, as He says, is a gift from the Holy Spirit. He shows us thereby that we must ascribe all that we might claim for ourselves to God who by grace grants us His Holy Spirit. So it's God working it out within our hearts as well. Not going to happen any other way. It can't happen any other way. It's like our salvation. Paul says work out your own salvation with fear and trembling has to be God working in, it with, uh, in us. Uh, it has to be the supernatural uh, power of God. I am closing this morning. It is the Holy Spirit who actualizes or makes real the love of God in the hearts of believers. That is God's love for us. William Barclay says, when a man's hope is in God, it cannot turn to dust and ashes. When a man's hope is in God, it cannot be disappointed. 
when a man's hope is in the love of God, it can never be an illusion. For God loves us with an everlasting love backed by an everlasting power. And today, we need to be conscious of the fact that God loves us. How many people need to be assured of that in their lives? Only the Spirit of God can make real to us God's love. What a wonderful thing. 